September 11, 2024. This is the S&P 500 eFutures Mini on the 2000 tick chart using NinjaTrader 8. This is what the chart looked like today, around 5.30, like yesterday. There was economic data that was released. It was the core PPI numbers. It's, I don't know, it kind of created a small sell-off, but the reaction wasn't that big. Overall, the whole day was kind of this choppy trading range. I mean, you could say maybe it was a stair step because it was kind of a, I don't know, kind of a range here. Then it stepped up and then it created this range here. There was no real explanation of why this crazy sell-off happened. It happened in a span of about three minutes. I tried to look for any news, but I couldn't find any reason because this happened not only on the eFutures Mini, but it also happened on the NASDAQ. And it happened across the board on a bunch of stocks. So something was said or something spooked the market. It pretty much sold off, bounced, and recovered, I would say, pretty much left off where it, where it was before. So it's almost like a nothing burger. The day, the volatility and volume were, you know, a lot lower than yesterday. Because yesterday, there was all kinds of setups that I could find. Today, it was a lot less. It was... It was um it was kind of a quiet day, very boring, harder to trade than yesterday for sure. So I'm gonna get on, go into the setups right now. Pre market, it was just kind of the spike, break of the green channel and test of the new high, and it made one leg down, push up, another leg down. It was just kind of choppy, no real setup that I could see. <clears throat> then the market opens. The first setup that I thought was potentially there was okay so this yellow down channel doesn't exist until this so actually ignore the yellow down channel at this point but i did have this lighter channel going down i actually highlight it as i guess i'll just highlight it in red for now because this is what i was playing with early on so i was thinking one touch two touch three touch and definitely a fourth touch here so i thought this is a possible trade because i also saw a triple test resistance coming here so it looks like it's hitting once, twice, three times, hitting a potential triple test and bouncing off the red down channel resistance. It created a one leg up, pull back, second leg up. So it's first entry short, second entry short. It's a pretty decent signal bar. Well, this is the signal bar here. It's not that great. It closed the high, but I like the trigger bar close. And I thought, okay, EMA is also kind of acting as resistance now. It's kind of holding prices down. There's enough room to the, to the lows. So this is probably a possible trade. We kind of chopped sideways. I thought it was in a range before. And then it sets up this failed second entry long, but this one isn't as clean. So I thought it was an almost trade. So technically, you have this trading range, which I thought I was working with. It was actually the highs of this trading range is a little bit lower here. And I thought these were two failed breakouts. But by the time the second failed breakout occurred, I dragged it from here up to here. So I thought, okay, I'm in a trading range. It's near the low of the trading range. I suspected maybe there is a channel going down here but it wasn't firm on it so actually i'm gonna go ahead and delete this for now just clean things up i saw a new high first entry long pullback second entry long second entry long this isn't a very strong second entry long it closed below the ema i'm thinking there might be another push down but if i truly am in a trading range one touch two touch three touch this could be a triple test and it could move back up so i waited then i saw this push up reverse down so i like these kinds of setups where it ticks one tick above and flushes down. So it's a confirmed first entry long, second entry long failure. The thing I didn't like about it and why I call it an almost trade is even though this is a really good, great signal bar, in any other context, this is probably a worthwhile trade. In this case, it's not because you barely have any room to scalp out. Maybe you have, if you really squeezed it, actually you only have like three ticks to scalp out safely. And that's just not enough, even if you're going for a one point scalp. So I had to leave it alone. It's unfortunate though, because I do like these type of setups. And then especially when this one formed, it looks like I had trouble pushing up and it closed even lower and closer to the support. But after seeing that, then I definitely was not thinking of going short, but I wasn't thinking of going long either because this is, looks like there was a lot of momentum pushing down. Yes, it could flush down, but it could suddenly reverse on me. But I didn't really have a great feel for what was going on. In this case, it did flush down and through. I also drew this yellow down channel at this point. I saw this as a fail breakout or an overshoot, undershoot, whatever you want to call it. And it sets up and it starts trading in this range. I had the range a little bit tighter previously, but then when it exceeded this twice, then I actually dragged it up to about right here. So I treated this as a fail breakout. 
a smaller fall, fail breakout here. I like this setup, but it, it just felt a little risky because the size of this candle is a new high. It's a first entry long pullback, second entry long. I also want to point out that this is coming from a fail breakout of a bigger down channel. So I'm expecting kind of a potential push out here. I saw this one leg, a consolidation, and a potential second leg of the same size to kind of create a corresponding symmetrical overshoot. I also like that it's a really strong close and it ticked one tick below and pushed all the way up and closed at the top. Now I was considering taking this trade, but yes, there's enough room to scalp out before you hit the top of the range. But I also was a little concerned that this is a, as you can see, 4.25 or 13, no, 17 tick bar by itself plus one tick below. But in this case, if I wanted, I really like this trade, I think I would have put the stop down here. So that's even adding even more risk on this gigantic candle. So <clears throat> it's a possible trade if you're more aggressive, but I just, I didn't personally like it. So I left it alone. Prices push up. I don't really see any clean second entries. There are second entries, but they're kind of too far. The context just didn't look right. I was thinking here, this is a new high, first entry long pullback, second entry long, but seeing this in real time, get a doji, you're thinking, okay, maybe there's a second entry long. You kind of have a second, you don't have kind of, you do. You have a new high, first entry long, pullback, second entry long. This is a good signal bar, but the follow-up, it makes me worried. It's doji followed by another doji. This arguably could have been a doji as well. So it's just very congested. There is clearly a tug of war. More to the buyers are winning, but it's no guarantee. I need something with a little more momentum. And like, if you entered, you would have gotten filled here, but that would have made me still kind of uneasy. And it looked like it would have worked for a quick scalp before it reversed all the way back down. So this is kind of like a danger zone. I'm, I'm glad I just stayed out of that. The prices come down, bounce. The first entry, there's no first entry short till it gets about here, technically. And you have a second entry short here, but there's no setup there. It falls into this consolidation area. This consolidation area just, it just doesn't look very appealing because yes, you have about maybe five point range, but these are just side by side. Plus the bodies are really tiny, like four or five in a row. And I don't feel comfortable trading something like this because there's no clear bias right now. EMA is already giving you no help because it's just flattening out. Then you have two dojis here and then a strong flush down. So what do you make of this? You have a bullish bias, a bearish bias, trading range. You likely have a trading range, but it's just very, very, I mean, previously you just had a sell-off, push-up. It didn't really hit the highs. It's just getting noisy. It's just confusing for me. But it sold off, bounces, and pushes back up. It bounces off the pre-market lows, which I had established here. So, But there, there was no trade to take advantage of that. And then it pushed up in two legs. Technically, you have a first entry short, second entry short failure. but Seeing this in real time, I suspected it might continue upwards, but I just didn't like the signal bar. It was too far from the EMA. I mean, it could also be seen as a break of this orange up channel, test of the high, it could make two legs down before continuing back upwards. So it's just unsure, unknown. So let, left it alone. Prices move up. It ended up looking like a spike and it kind of a channel down. I tried previously to make something work because it looked like it was maybe something like this. Then it would have been a break, a test of a new low, but it was consolidating. Then it flushed this way, consolidated some more. So I was adjusting these channels all over the place. And at one time I was thinking maybe it's something like this, but this isn't the cleanest looking channel either. You could say it's a break, test of the new low. Let's go. Okay. So then it looks like it's in a trading range now. And despite that, I did have one of these, one of my trade down channels excuse me, one of my trend lines coming down, touching here and here. I didn't have the other side corresponding to making a channel just yet. I wasn't sure if it was here, here, or actually down here. Ended up being pretty much right here. What I did see is, it looks like a one attempt up, second attempt up, third attempt up. So it's a triple test. I still saw this as a new low. First entry short, pull back, second entry short. But these were so close together, I just counted this as a localized low. It says it's like, this localized low, first entry short pullback, second entry short. You could say it's like a first entry short, second entry short, third entry short. It's up to you how the count goes. But nevertheless, it's a triple test. Looks like it's two presses down, maybe three. I like that this candle, I like the type of setups where it 
pushes up one tick, then reverses strongly, engulfs this previous candle just with the body, and it has a couple of ticks below. So I thought this is a, maybe a possible trade on top of being at the top of the range, which, you know, it looks like it's starting to range because it was ranging before here. <clears throat> so I thought, okay, this is a pretty significant reversal. Maybe there's a trade here, but I, I left it alone. Price is then continue moving. Now, this could have been a second attempt to move to take the trade because it is trading another test here with a reversal and never ticked above. The thing I don't really like about this is I didn't like the signal bar was green. I wanted a red or a bearish signal bar to feel more safe. <clears throat> Pushes down. And then here I sets up a, I guess, another trade potential, but I thought it was an almost trade. So it, I have this green down channel. I was playing with the idea that this is probably a green down channel. One touch, two touch, three touch. Essentially a four touch. One, two, three, right? So I was thinking I'm playing potentially a spike and a channel down. It's a new low, say first entry short. Pull back. Here, I was suspecting a second entry short because it looked like it's a break of this range and it might be a fail breakout. It's coming up. The EMA is starting to act as resistance. It could push down. I didn't really feel strongly about it though because it was a doji. I needed more information from this candle. Ideally, it would have closed at the low and I could see a clear first entry short pullback, second entry short, a failed breakout pullback continuation down. But it did bounce off the bottom of this green down channel. So I'm thinking this could be one push up pullback and it could be a second push up to try to test the other side. So there's some ambiguity here. So I definitely had to leave it alone. And I thought, well, if it sets up a lower high in the next few candles, then maybe I'll try to take that short. It doesn't until it gets about here. This lower high, this candle, is already pretty large. It's an 18 tick candle. The body is pretty far from the EMA. And by the time it closes, which is here, it made an attempt down. It just felt sketchy. I just didn't really like the looks of this candle as being a lower high. So it's kind of abandoned the trade completely. Or abandoned the idea of taking a short. Then prices kind of spike, moves up. It gets a little noisy. It's this consolidation trading range. Then it flushes up pretty, not flushes up, pushes up really hard. Hits this kind of a gradual push, consolidates, and then fires up again. <clears throat> right now, it's really far from the EMA, so I am not thinking of going short yet, but I'm not thinking of going long yet either. But I just think, okay, there's bulls have clearly taken over. Look for, look for a long, if it ever comes back to the EMA or has a clean friend channel that I can find which I had trouble finding because things just didn't fit quite clean, touching, touching the bars. So I just kind of sat on my hands and watched. Continues up. I did find this. I was considering maybe there's a new high, first entry long pullback, second entry long. But look at the size of these candles. It's a very, 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 very tight range right here. So it just makes me uneasy trying to like get these super micro scalps. So then push up, kind of hits this consolidation area again. It's this longer consolidation, and this is just noisy, noisy and very slow. I don't really see anything that I particularly like. Then it flushes down. This is the uh, flush down that happened across the board. It happened on the NQ, it happened on the ES, it happened on several, just all the stocks that I also track. And it happened in a matter of about three minutes. Nobody really knew why this happened. I looked on the news, I looked at a bunch of news sites to see if anything was announced. Was there like, we're going to war, we're doing something weird, nothing. It just found, just seemed like this just flushed down for reasons that I haven't been able to figure out, reasons that aren't known to the public. It just flushed down and it started to bounce back. So it actually sets up my one and only trade. So I saw a new low here. I saw first entry short, pull back, second entry short, but it's also looking like one leg going up. So I saw this a break, first attempt up, pull back, makes a second attempt up, so it's a break of the green channel. It looked like it was two legs down. I saw this as a higher low because it bounced off the EMA technically, and it could be testing the highs here. Now, I entered the trade after this candle closed. So in real time, I'm seeing this. I saw one leg down, second leg down, pushes up, and it closes pretty high. So I'm thinking, okay, I want to enter this, probably one tick above this guy to get a little more safety. That's what I do. I enter one tick above the highs of this guy. And then the same candle, it takes out my profit target. 
which is great. I quickly move my stop loss to one tick above, and then when it comes back down, it takes out my runner. So there was no runner here, but I didn't lose, uh, I didn't really lose, give back too much, if any. Now in hindsight, I'm thinking I should have just skipped this trade altogether. Look at the time of day. This is only about an hour, 30 minutes to an hour left of trading. I was so, well, to be honest, kind of bored watching all this unfold and nothing was really happening. Prices were taking forever to close. There just weren't that very, very many clean setups. It was such a difference compared to yesterday. I think I was definitely feeling a little bit of FOMO, like I needed to do something. So this trade wasn't the cleanest, not the highest probability. Yeah, I think I should have just skipped it completely and just gone the day without taking a trade at all. So I did write down in my notes that yeah, this trade isn't a good trade. It just happened. It and it just happened that it worked out. My stop loss was one tick below this guy. Actually, it was one tick below this guy first, and I dragged it to. I would have dragged it here, and it looked like I would have survived and probably gotten a clean profit target here if you know if this one didn't tick above. This one might have just gotten me out, but if it didn't, I'd probably have to wait until here. This would have been a kind of like a seven, five to seven minute wait, which is a little bit long considering the time of day. And this trade should have just been skipped completely. And prices move and moves into the close. So even the last 10 minutes, which is right here, it was just noisy. There's no, no clean setups, nothing I would definitely want to take, especially when there's only 10 minutes left. So ended up being a one trade day that was profitable, but it wasn't the cleanest high probability setup. So not too many trades today, not too many setups. Hopefully that was helpful.